Hey YouTube, I'm Mr. Terry, a high school history teacher. Welcome back to another reaction video. All right, so one of the channels that I've been getting recommended and has been blowing up is called Blue Jay. Now, I didn't know where to start in reviewing this channel, so I put it up to a poll. I wanted to know what you think the first video I should watch from this channel. And as you can see from the results, this one got chosen quite handily, and that is the dumbest Russian voyage nobody talks about. Oh, I love dumb history videos, and this one's killing it. It's got 2 million views in less than a year, so I've been sleeping on this. All right, hey, if you would like to get involved in polls like this, I'm gonna start doing them a lot more. All you gotta do is sub. Hit the sub button down below, and you will see occasional polls show up in your subscription feed, so keep an eye on that. All right, the original video link is gonna be down below. Make sure you're supporting Blue Jay. Give it a subscription, give them a like on the video, do all the things, make sure we're promoting the content. All right, with that, let's get started. There are an abundance of iconic hey, combinations out there, like spaghetti and meatballs, a sorority girl Delicious. in a white jeep, or depression and alcoholism. But like U.S. presidents Sad. and convertibles, not everything can be a match made in heaven. Oh, gosh. And as much as Mother Russia would Too love soon. to dominate the high seas, nearly landlocked nations and stellar navies don't exactly go hand in hand. But for all the Russian navies, True. dismal underwhelming, pathetic lack of glory in the early 20th century, it's True. always important to look on the bright side. Like how it gives me good YouTube content. So until <laughs> Brief history here. Yeah, Russia started out as a completely landlocked country and through conquests of people like Peter the Great and Catherine the Great um, a couple centuries ago, you started to see them move into potentially being a naval power, at least wanting to be. Because that was always the big thing in like the 1700s, actually go back to like 15, 16, 17, 1800s, naval power, right? And uh, I'm not sure if they're going to get into it necessarily, but one of the things that was kind of humiliating for the Russian Navy, because they were talking about early 20th century, was Russia's loss to Japan in the Russo-Japanese War that really showed that Russia's military, especially their navy, was not up to par with other countries, even burgeoning industrial countries like Japan. Today's episode, I'm going to learn you all about the misadventures of the Learn Russian us, Baltic fleet. All right. So it's in the Baltic. I'm Blue Jay. Russia's kind of cool, right? That was a trick question. It's the turn of the 20th century, and what better way to kick off Big a new era than expansion? Russia is cold, which right. is great for things like stopping Nazis and badass TikToks, Very but not true. ideal for ports. Having your port turn into ice every in the winter, winter is what those of us more versed in nautical terms would call not very cash money. The Russian Empire notices <laughs> China has a pretty nifty port with, get this, warm water. However, there's this pesky little thing called a border. I'm getting, by the way, because this is my first time reacting to this channel, um, like the, the vibe of kind of a mixture of things. It's like a little bit of oversimplified. It's like a little bit of salmonella. It's kind of following in that falling in there. I like that. They're in the way, but that's okay. China isn't European. It's not a real country. So Russia takes control and gets the chance. That's literally the like port. the European Japan doesn't like what they see. So they meet with Russia and are all like, hey, vodka boy, invading China is our thing. But Russia won't share, right. leaving diplomacy dead in the water. But that's okay. The new DLC just dropped. You see that Russia and um, Russia and Japan both wanted warm water access around the ports around like Manchuria. Russia was kind of coming in from the south kind of as they were moving uh, in their expansion eastward, right? But the problem is like straight eastward with Russia, you get icy waters, which means you can't have full year warm water ports. So they wanted to go south as well, um, kind of west of Korea. Problem was... Japan also had already annexed Korea and had been uh, in, uh, interested in that region. So they're both going over that territory for port cities. And that means naval problems. And everyone's just itching to try out their new toys. So the yep, Japanese attacked Port Arthur, kicking off the Russo-Japanese War. So you can see what I'm talking about with the map. You can see my mouse. It's really small. It's right under war, Russo-Japanese War. Russia, as you can see, has territory right over here in the east, up here in the North Atlantic or North Pacific, sorry, but this is uh, colder water, right? And good ports come down here. You can see where they put the little, uh, the little ship. So what they want to do is cut south across kind of this uh, area that's called known as Manchuria, but also Japan had been in that region because they have been expanding through imperialism onto mainland Asia. So you get that um, conflict right there. And as I told you earlier, um, Overall, Japan won that, which was quite alarming to like Europe. Like Ru Russia became like, at least in the Russian eyes, and maybe the eyes of a lot of imperi European imperialists, as kind of backwards. Like you lost to Japan; they just barely industrialized like 15 years ago. 
war. Fast forward a few battles, and the Russians are losing pretty badly. So the Tsar yeah, authorizes quite too. the preposterous proposal of sending the Russian Baltic fleet to reinforce the east. And you may be wondering, but Blue Jay, what's so preposterous about sending reinforcements? Well, kiddo, oh, the Baltic this, part okay, of so Russian this is Baltic part of, fleet. So this is part of the uh, uh, Russo-Japanese war. It's the Baltic fleet, but I'm guessing they're, they're, they're coming over to um, probably around Korea, maybe around Tsushima. Um, that's one of the popular means battles. It operates then. in, get this, the Baltic. And as we learned earlier, boats don't like ice, so you can't right. go this way to Port exactly. Arthur, meaning the Tsar authorized a plan for an 18,000 mile we'll journey the around Suez. the world, which is 29,000 kilometers, or 1,140,480,000 gumballs. That's ridiculous. The voyage distance. was also a logistical nightmare, as the Russians didn't have any holdings in Africa or South Asia to refuel along the way. Yeah. Add that to the fact that the fleet spent months at a time frozen in port, so the crew of mostly uneducated peasants couldn't tell you the difference between a bowline knot and a porcelain pot. This group of uh, inexperienced conscripts noobs. was put under the command of Admiral Rosetsvensky, a man so prone to anger that his staff made sure to keep a large supply of binoculars at the ready due to how often he would throw them overboard. But hey, fuck it, <laughs> what better way to learn than a trial by fire, right? So they set sail on their epic quest to turn the tide of the war and bring glory to the motherland. And immediately the flagship runs aground and a cruiser oh, loses his anchor. While well, they waited for the flagship to refill, a destroyer forgot friendly fire was on and rammed into a battleship. Prompting Russian naval power, it's it's still new. It's I mean during the 19th century, but it's still new. And you see the logistical nightmare. Literally, they had to go around the world to get to here um, to to fight <laughs> against a growing naval power like Japan. Japan used a lot of naval knowledge and naval technology, got a lot of that. Uh, from like the British, for example, with you know the peak navy in the world, so they were able to like just fast forward into becoming a naval power and lapped a lot of other countries. I mean, obviously, Russia being one. To return for repairs. Don't worry, men. Surely this can't be foreshadowing. As the fleet pushed on, a growing hysteria spread amongst the crew. They were afraid that at any second they'd be ambushed by Japanese torpedo boats. By and Denmark. This is where the war oh, is, if you Denver. forgot. But the crewmen didn't have time to worry about things as frivolous wait, as... Wait, wait, I did not notice. The Japanese had torpedo boats over by Denmark in the Russo-Japanese War? Or was he joking? They were afraid that at any second they'd be ambushed by Japanese torpedo boats. By Denmark? This is where oh, the war is, Denmark. if you forgot. Okay. But the crewmen didn't have time to worry... By, actually, they thought that Denmark was going to shoot them? Or, like, by as in near about things as frivolous as logic. So when two fishermen approached the fleet to deliver a message, they opened fire. Oh, the two geez. fishermen survived the false alarm without a scratch thanks to the horrible standards of the Russian gunnery. As for their <laughs> message, they informed Rear Admiral Rosetsvensky that he'd been promoted to Vice Admiral. <sighs> Iron this. This wouldn't be the only false alarm, as later another ship signaled that she was under attack by eight Japanese torpedo boats, only to find out that there were zero Japanese <laughs> torpedo boats. <laughs> There, Rip. there was just nothing there. Having survived the Baltic, our heroes made their way towards Britain, where they encountered a small group of fishing trawlers at Donger Bank. But surely by now our skittish sailors have learned their lesson. Oh, ninjas! Stradiantes bullshit! <laughs> Chaos ensued as the Russians laid down hellfire upon the unsuspecting fishermen. The Russians are going bonkers. Some run around the deck aimlessly waving cutlasses to repel imaginary boarding parties, while others <laughs> yeah, just cuddle up on the deck so with dumb. life jackets, accepting their demise. Keep it up, men! <laughs> These Japanese have Just horrendous aim, Igor. We haven't even taken a hit. But hey, at least it's time They're we made so sure paranoid. they weren't fishermen first. <laughs> They're so paranoid. We're shooting at fishermen, aren't we? Yeah. Definitely a possibility, <laughs> yep. sir. Well, at least we didn't fire on our own ships, killing a sailor and Russian Orthodox priest. The no. British trawler no. fleet were sitting no. ducks as their nets in the water prevented a hasty escape, and the Russians fired at them for 20 minutes before realizing their mistake. While this sounds like the setup for a massacre, you forget our heroes are about as effective as a guy holding a fish on tinder, sinking only one trawler and damaging two of their own ships. The battleship- I'd assume the British ship's like, no, holding up big fish, like, look, we, we're fishermen, fishermen. Ship Oriole really captured the spirit of a TikTok pickup artist, reportedly oh, shooting 500 shots without scoring a single hit. Two fishermen and two Russians died in the mayhem. So they really shot the survivors a could brag at the local pub that they tied with the Russian Navy. This event became known as the Dogger Bank Incident and nearly ignited a war between Russia and Britain. The Brits just settled for revoking their access to the Suez Canal, forcing the Russians to make a slight tweak in their that course. That is a huge deal, though. Okay, the the. Using the Suez Canal, Europe using the Suez Canal cuts many weeks 
off of a voyage. In the old days before like modern steamships, it was months, months to get around Africa. And you could do it in a couple weeks from like Britain to India, which is the reason the Suez Canal was built, really. It was so Britain could connect with India, which was a colony and uh, 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 made colonial aspirations there as well as a lot of places. But having giving the Suez Canal uh, locked down that almost makes like right there that should be game over for the russians like it's it's over it, there's no way it could be worth it after this it's just settled for revoking their access to the suez canal forcing the russians to make a slight tweak in their course Jeez. the slow coal-powered fleet made its way towards africa attacking more civilians and cutting underwater telegraph cables along the way they met up with some german They're supply ships everybody to refuel off. due to the aforementioned lack of african holdings to make ports what nice friends those germans i'm sure the relationship will last africa's pretty big almost Ugh. as big as my self-loathing so they took on double you know just to just to insert here um this this war that's going on the russo japanese war a lot of people attribute czar nicholas and just kind of the russian monarchy government whatever that since they got <coughs> largely kind of humiliated by the japanese that that made them a little bit eager to what the right word or the right way to explain it is to really uh, um, show strength like and be extra aggressive in the early parts of world war one so rather than being uh, uh like a like a um intermediary you know uh, in, in getting peace between like Austria, Hungary, and Serbia in World War One, that they exacerbated it and and got it going as a way again to show they they, they didn't want to be the laughing stock, this pushover of Europe, you know what I mean, as a result of the Russo Japanese War. So there's a lot of people say some connection there because they're just within about ten years of each other of coal and kept giant piles of the stuff just sitting on deck definitely the kind of thing to land you an epa audit but yeah. it's not like any sailors were going to die from black lung except for the ones who did morale yep. is low so the Horrible. russian crew decides to lift their spirits by treating themselves to the exotic pets of madagascar all right men you all can hey igor stop sniffing of exotic glitters, everybody you all can go ashore and pick out one <laughs> thing to bring back with you nothing too crazy like snakes or crocodiles oh Motherfuck. yeah what did i say <laughs> sir i can explain what Watch throw back the shot at Tito's. The ship became have a that floating stuff. zoo as the crew brought on In a Russia. bunch of animals cool. to roam the deck for It's like it's like a modern day Zheng He ship from China where they would go and bring back animals from Africa, like giraffes and stuff, because they were so exotic to the Chinese, you know? It's just like the Russian version of that. Really, including a crocodile and a venomous snake, which apparently took a liking for vodka. Panic followed shortly when the snake <laughs> awesome. wrapped itself around guns and bit a commanding officer. Drunk One sailor snake. gifted the admiral a parrot, which soon took after his rather extensive vocabulary of Russian curses. <laughs> the flagship soon <laughs> became overrun mean? with chameleons, Maybe you shouldn't say in the comments. missing due to their ability to seamlessly camouflage. Hey Igor, have you seen Comrade Camo? I can't find the little guy anywhere. No, I don't think so. Have you seen him private? Yeah, I don't think he's seen him either. But a good zoo <laughs> isn't complete without an underwater exhibit. And luckily for them, the cooling plant on their refrigeration ship broke down, forcing them to dump all their meat into the ocean and giving them a nice following of sharks. Oh, At one God. point, the fleet was holding they're, one of... Every decision, everything they're doing is just dumb. I can see why they call it the dumbest Russian voyage. It's like the wrong decision. They're making the wrong decision for every decision that needs to be made many funerals for a sailor who died of illness. During the ceremony, the Kamchatka fired a gun salute. Yes. Excellent work, gentlemen. Oh. Hey, say, you boys did make sure to load blanks, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Igor, you're looking kind of pale there, buddy. <laughs> After some more shenanigans, like <laughs> foiling really a mutiny and receiving a shipment of fur boots and coats instead of ammo, Admiral Rosetsvensky realized that they were approaching Japan. Ah, oh, shit, that's right, I didn't train them. So he decided to run some gunnery <laughs> practice on a stationary target. Miraculously, our group of misfits managed to score a single hit on the ship towing the target. But hey, potato, potato. At long last, the Baltic fleet closes in on Japan, approaching the Tsushima Strait like, during the night. The okay, so yeah, Tsushima, Sh Tsushima Strait, the, uh, this is going to be actually a, a really important battle that was pretty much the end for the, for the war there, um, right between Japan and Korea. Uh... Anyway, I mean, imagine the weeks and weeks that this has gone on and all the horrible things that have happened. Now you have to fight a superior, you have to fight a war against a superior enemy. Like, how are you going to be able to even do Fleet that? Fleet extinguishes their lights to maintain stealth, all except for the Orel, which, as a hospital ship, kept them burning in accordance with the rules of war. The Orel comes upon a Japanese ship in the dark. And finally, after an extensive list of false alarms attacking fishermen and merchants alike across half of the now high it's seas, time to fight. they come across an actual Japanese vessel and? and determine it to be Russian. So they use their lights to communicate with oh. it.
They thought it was another Russian ship. It's like they've been wrong about identifying every ship on this journey. Every ship has been identified wrong. And the one that's the worst one to get wrong, they're getting wrong. And they really did like the, the uh, they sent a message, hey, be careful of the other Russian vessels around me. We're sneaking up on the Japanese in the dark. Don't tell anyone. So I'm sort of paraphrasing it, but oh no. <laughs> Winky face. The battle of Tsushima ensues. Will our gallant sailors hold their own against the Japanese? This was the really was decimated. Four thousand Russians short. die, with an additional seventy-three hundred taken prisoner, compared to roughly one hundred Japanese deaths. This effectively ended the war, marking the yeah. first time in history that an Eastern power defeated a European one. Way to go, buddy! Let's add that one to the scoreboard. That's big time. Yeah. Oh. Serious? Oh dear. This is this is still a age of imperialism where European nations have had their will, un unfortunately, with um, uh, nations across Asia, and to be the first one to lose was something that was embarrassing from the Russian perspective and was made them the laughing stock. Again, this stuff matters because, like I was saying, you know, people have attributed that to Russia's, you know, extra aggression in World War One was not to be continuing or whatever and, and not be th seen of as this pushover nation. Dear. So, in conclusion, the Russian Baltic fleet's odyssey around the world is a tale full of shenanigans and blunders, with our troublemaking peasant crew racking up quite the body count of innocent civilians and friendlies before seeing an actual enemy. And yes, while they may have attacked ships from practically every global power, disabled cities' communication grids, killed fellow sailors with gross negligence of safety practices, nearly ignited a major European war, and were about as accurate as Helen Keller playing laser tag, Ooh. they also taught a snake to drink vodka. <laughs> I'll give you my recap. All right, I think we found a winner with this channel. So I've been sleeping on this and I've definitely been sleeping on it because just looking at some of the videos, there are like four with like a million views within a year or so. Um, so that's very, very impressive. Like I was saying though, I, th I feel like this channel, it's like, it's like oversimplified and Salmonella had a baby. It's this channel, Blue Jay. And that's fantastic. This video would be great. It's again, it was about eight minutes. Um, I have to sneak this into my lesson when we talk about Japanese imperialism in my world history class, just to sneak this in as something fun to kind of talk about uh, and give a little evidence or whatever. You know, it's very comical that way uh, about why the Japanese potentially won this battle and, you know, push history in that direction. So anyways, um, I'd love to be able to have stuff that I can use as my arsenal as a teacher. All right. Anyway, um, make sure, absolutely make sure um, you are supporting this channel. If you're not subbing, go down below. The link to this original video is going to be there. Give it a like, um, share it with others and subscribe and do all those things. And if you want me to cover more from this channel, just let me know down below. And again, like I was saying at the beginning of the video, look out for more polls where I might be asking you guys about videos I should be watching. Another place you can drop video suggestions is over on the Discord server. There's a channel specifically for video suggestions that make it pretty easy for me to uh, be able to see. All right, with that, we'll see you next time. Bye.